Good afternoon and welcome to my daily broadcast, Facebook Live. Um, I do these on Facebook Live first, then they go to YouTube and onto my podcast, which I'll get to later on. Today's episode is number 469, and the topic today is Mama's Boys and Daddy's Girls. Some issues. So let's go and have some fun, shall we? Before I get to that, get to that let me talk about myself. I should say introduce myself so you know who, what I am about, who I am, etc. And then we'll get into the topic, because it's going to be provocative, to say the least. My name is Barry Selby. I am a best-selling author, speaker, and relationship attraction expert, and help strong, successful women find balance in love, life, and business. Um, I'm also a passion champion for the divine feminine. Did I cover everything? I think I did. Yes. Yeah, best-selling author, speaker, and relationship attraction expert, and help strong, successful women find balance in love, life, and business. I did say that, because that's my passion, and I was actually talking to a friend earlier, which is what inspired this talk. Um, sorry, let me just make sure my... What's it is my computer is doing, sorry, my screen is doing something because I'm attempting to um, get this to work. There we go. All right. So, topic today, and this is, by the way, is, again, is episode, oh, that's the piece I missed. Every day, <laughs> I'm a bit rushing, I should slow down a bit. Okay. Every day, I do these talks called Messages from the Masculine to Inspire Your Feminine Heart. Mostly to inspire women, but also to inspire men to wake up to the possibility of relationship, love, self-support, um, integrity, inspiration, etc., etc. And so today's episode number 469, which is one of many talks, as you can tell, I've done over the last year and two-thirds. Actually, almost, yeah, it's been about, yeah, it's been that long. And today's topic, um, again, was provoked, provoked, interesting, inspired by a conversation with a friend of mine who just went through a really messy uh, disengagement, which I may touch on, but I will speak to this more generally first rather than to get into the real dark stuff. And so the topic today is mama's boys and daddy's mama's boys and daddy's girls. Some issues because there's positives and minuses. There's actually more minuses, I believe, around that conversation than there are positives. But I'll start with the positives first because this could be something useful to you if you're looking at meeting somebody or thinking about yourself in relationship to your parents in relationship. So. And I'm not going to get into the whole conversation. Well, maybe I will. Let me not, not, let me not jump ahead of myself. <laughs> so thanks for being with me as always. This is normally a 5 p.m. Pacific time broadcast, but I'm doing it an hour earlier because I've got early commitments tonight. I've got a social life suddenly, so I've got to do things earlier, so I have to get this done earlier than normal. If you're watching the replay, it doesn't matter what time it is. You're just watching anyway, which is fine. So let's just, let's just get into this, shall we? I'm avoiding it too much. So there is... A framing conversation presentation people say about how you tend to marry your parents you know a lot of times they say that women tend to marry their fathers as in marry someone who reminds them of their father that part is true but uh, there's a piece I want to get to and I'm going to get to that in a minute but I want to start with this one because I've talked about it before but I want to give you the, the groundwork or the framework I'm speaking to and from so you get what I mean I've talked about this before but that we are generally inspired about relationship actually not necessarily inspired but programs but a word about relationship based upon what we see our parents do to each other yes do to each other not what they say to each other but how they are with each other the doing this so as kids we look to our parents for certain ways and in some ways also we tend to look for the opposite parent as a representative of what we're looking for in our own partner down the road so we may be a um and say this if you're a straight man looking at a relationship, you may look at your mother to represent certain qualities that you actually subconsciously, and this is the key, subconsciously believe that your partner should have. If you're a straight, a straight woman, I'm using that to opposite sex, as if it's your, if you're, I, I can't speak to the gay context, that's not my framework, but it may work the opposite way for them, I'm not sure. I'm, I'm being polite because I don't know it that well. I you know a lot of gay friends. So a straight woman may look to her father to represent the qualities, or in fact, let me let's say it this way. Because again, it's subconscious, it's programming. So as children, we start doing it, then as adults, we, co we copy that. So a lot of ladies out there have been looking to find someone who will represent their father in their lives in a partnership. This is the daddy's girl syndrome. And it can be a syndrome on the negative side. So on the positive side, if your parents represented that role model well of the, of the opposite sex, then when you're an adult, you'll attract someone who matches that almost, almost automatically because, as I said, this wiring, this programming we have, is subconscious. I'm not going to get into all of that. You can watch my other broadcast. I've talked about this many times before. 
But I want to speak to a particular side of the issue side versus the positive side, the negative side. Because this is the case, and I'm going to build from here, what my friend talked about. She found out, and when we talked, it made total sense to her, that the man she was dating, and these, these two are both in their late 30s, I think, maybe early 40s, so not 20-year-olds, but mature adults, that when they went back to see the family and he introduced her to his mother, he d she discovered that he really was a mama's boy, and I don't mean it in a good way. In fact, what we talked about afterwards was that she was so doting on her son that no woman would be good enough for him. You may have seen this before, experienced this before. And it's true with, with, with dads with the daughters as well. Actually, it works, both, it works over both parents to children. But in this context, he was so... Um, he, was still a, he was still like a 10-year-old a boy to his mother, even though he was in his 40s. He's a, you know, his body is strong, he's tough, he's a big guy, he's a real macho, strong guy. Well, masculine guy, to, believed. But his way of being in relationship was governed by her thought process in his head. So he would be so committed to relationship, as soon as he would talk to his mother on the phone, or go visit her, her beliefs would override his. And because she wasn't willing to let her son go to be in a relationship, to be free to make mistakes, she was the right woman, she would denigrate, insult, and otherwise um, whitewash any woman he went out with with negative press. Basically fake news in a way. Didn't need to do that, but I thought I'd just throw one in because it's kind of fun. It's true the other side too, where a father will tell his daughter that no, no boy is good enough for her. So it works both sides. So this is not unusual to be one or the other. It's happens both sides. Now, the challenge with this is if you're the other person, not the one that's being doted on, you don't have much of a leverage point to stand on because if that child is, I mean, adult child of the parent is still hooked into that programming, that wiring, it's been going on all their lives. So your antecedents, having known them for a couple of years, may not have any impact. And to be honest, the best you can do is walk away because you can't fix them. You know, you might want to. By the way, by the way, if you want to fix your partner relationship, you're in trouble already, so don't even go there. But this is the paradigm we're playing with, where people, in general, can be messed up in their own upbringing around love. Not necessarily through um, past relationships, but through the way they're raised by the parents and the way they're influenced by them. Now, on the other side of the coin, there are some of us, yes, I include myself in this one, who were rebels <laughs> growing up. So we would tend to do the opposite of what we were told by our parents, which is not always a good thing either, because sometimes the advice from our parents can be good stuff, and we ignore it. So it, it can be double and negative as well. So in the context I had, um, so I'm noticing a cat out of the corner of my eye that's, yeah, he's looking over at me. So anyway, stay present. <laughs> so often in cases the child can be rebellious against the parent and so rather than be doted on by the parent they're actually going to go no I'm not going to follow that and be the act, the act opposite so if a parent if the mama for example said to her son that you know she'd be no good for you because you're, you're, you, you deserve better than that if he was a rebel or on, a, on a opposition he might in fact run away and go with that woman to piss off his mother. So it works the other way too. So the paradigm I'm talking about isn't one way or the other, it just happens the way it happens. The challenge in some ways, I feel, is that when a child is doted on by the parent, and especially if it's an only child, now usually that happens more likely with an only child, to be honest, and especially, I mean, there are, ex there are exceptions as well, but oftentimes these things can happen, and this is where this deck, the deck can be stacked in this position. If Speaking of a mama's boy in this context, only son, raised by either a single mother or a mother who was dominating the whole family, dominated the husband, dominated everybody else. So her son becomes the apple of her eye and he can, not much he can do no wrong, but he must do no wrong. And she's so protective, it's almost like she wants to rub him in, wrap him in bubble wrap in the world of dating. Because any woman that gets her claws into him, the way she thinks, would steal him from her. So she'll do whatever she does and can do, keep him close because she loves him so much. And this is the thing, all of this negative stuff, all of this challenge and upset and frustration and worry is still based in love because it comes from that desire for more closeness and connection and safety, even though it's totally 
um, miswired from what it should be. And this is the dance of relationship that can be challenging when you meet somebody because until you know their history and their background, and especially when you know your own history and background, it can be challenging to choose a relationship from a clean place because what you're doing is discovering for yourself that your choices in relationship aren't your own. Your choices in relationship could be influenced and um, programmed by something that isn't yours, by your parents, for example, as I mentioned. And again, I've done talks about this for a lot of times about how we, cho we choose as youngsters, or rather we as youngsters learn from our parents how to choose a relationship. And it's usually dysfunctional. So a lot of people out there are walking around choosing relationships, not from what they see out there intentionally, but what's driving their inside subconscious programming, which is why I specialize in in my coaching, is fixing that. So this one I'm using is a, is a, spe is a specific example of the doting or over-controlling or um, smothering methodology that some parents do on their kids. So the choices can never be good enough and no date can be good enough to take them away from their parents. It's like you can't take my, you know, the woman, basically what the mother was saying is that no woman's good enough for my son so I'm keeping to myself. Now, it may have come out of love but it was really distorted because he's, you know, he's 40 something at this point. But it happens and this is not the only time it happens. This happens in other ways too. And again, same is true on the other side with men, with, with fathers and their daughters. So if you're a, a child of parents, which you probably are, <laughs> like that was weird then I invite you to look at your own life your own history and see if your relationship choices that you can be aware of were influenced by your parents either subconsciously or overtly and if you've had feedback from your parent one of them or the other that said that the people the partners you chose weren't good enough for you now if that was true check inside and see if that's really accurate or not it might be accurate. Maybe they are telling you that your choices could be raised. Maybe you are slumming in your dating choices. But then again, maybe they're in a place where there's such perfection in their eyes that you can never have what you really want because they won't let you. And that's the time to be really clear about setting up boundaries. Because if you're in that place where you're feeling that pressure from a parent that you can never have what you want, it's limiting your choices and not letting you have the freedom you really deserve. So creating boundaries create separation to own your own space and take care of yourself it may feel scary because you've been under that protection for so long it may be hard to leave but for your freedom you need to now this is not easy stuff I'm telling you this is big stuff for some of you that was like how do I get out of this but I recommend if, that, if that's your situation you get help guidance support from if you're a man from a men's group or from a woman from a woman's group to support you in your own independence and autonomy to be free in the world of that over influence that um, domination by your parent if you're dating someone like that, again, as I said at the beginning, if this is something where you're experiencing that in partnerships, their, their parents' control of them is too strong for you to fight because they've had them their whole lives. So I unfortunately, and much as I can say it's challenging, is it might be worth you walking away. Simply disengage and say, you know, I can't because you're battling against their dominant parent and you won't win. So in that situation, the best thing is just walk away. They might discover themselves to free up and come back Yes, yes, Cassandra, yes, it is, it is creating boundaries, it's big stuff. This is true in any area, by the way, but especially in this parental um, description I'm using in this context. So yeah, it's definitely big stuff. I'm already flying around my face. So, um, let's see if there's anything else on this one, because this was meant to be a specific, specific example, which I talked about with the mama's boy. But again, it's worked both ways in the framework and for both the one who's the dominated child as well as the one dating the child, there are challenges ahead. So, oh, and <laughs> here's a little PS. One of these ones that makes it even more confusing or challenging is if you're dating someone, big oh, it was a big fly? <laughs> I didn't see how close it was. I just saw it fly by, so I didn't see it close, so it was in front of the camera. <laughs> Thank you for that, Cassandra. Um, if that doting parent is no longer here, like they're passed over, that can be an insurmountable error, um, insurmountable challenge, let me say that, because you can't face them. So if, for example, this mama's boy has her now in his head only because she's left the physical realm, he may need to seek counsel, guidance, therapy, 
but the truth is harder to even overcome because that, that's an, that's a she's now is how to say this that the doting son with a parent or the doting mother rather with a son is now in a way immutable because she's now transitioned so that could be even harder so that's another piece just to make it even more challenging so that was in response to a question I didn't hear you ask but it was about what if parents aren't around anymore that was the answer <laughs> so my suggestion to you if you're out dating is it's good to know what the family paradigm is they come from that's a big lesson to do especially if you're going beyond just the, the casual dating and sex and everything if you want a real relationship get to know their their framework their environment their um, family structure was it healthy if it wasn't healthy did they grow out of it because that's the other thing is a lot of, a lot of people have dysfunctional history history in their relationships with their parents and their family dynamics but they've done work to heal it if they haven't you may want to may want to pass on that one and if you haven't done the work get some help and that's where I come in a <laughs> little plug for a couple of things my coaching is to help you not just attract the right partner it's a lot about how to heal the wounds in your heart from past relationships and even from your history with your parents I'm I don't coach everybody but I do offer an invitation to talk first because I'm very selective of my clients and if you feel that you're ready to do some work and really transform your life I'll have an invitation for you I'll put the link in the comments below later on the way to find out to talk to me is you have a chat with me which is why you go to barryselby.com my website forward slash chat that's easy enough and you can sign up for a discovery session with me it's a free gift just book a time fill out the form and we can talk second thing is as a reminder because this feels in this place too which is a lot of the challenge that we face in our lives is we're out there looking and hoping that person's going to change and it's all my fault because they didn't happen or whatever this stuff was one of the biggest things we forget to do is love ourselves and it sounds so simplistic and I know it is but we overlook it so many times so I recommend I've done this before in my videos but I've actually made it into a product and it's a self love a 30 day self love um, meditation contemplation practice I've created a product that now has guided meditations in audio format two of them an AM and a PM version as well as a um, 30 page workbook and guidance system to really get you on track if you're like if your self love needs some up leveling I highly recommend you check it out and if it matches what you're looking for just sign up and get it um, that link again my name is my site barryselby.com forward slash self love or one word so those two things I recommend you check out I'll put the comments in the miss oh thank you Cassandra <laughs> I appreciate the love um, I will be back on again tomorrow I think it'll be 5 p.m. Pacific time usually it is today I've got I've got a commitment tonight so I'm gonna do this early so I appreciate you being with me and if you have questions comments about this broadcast please point below and I will um, respond in the comments afterwards. Oh, yes. Where you find my broadcast? This is my daily Facebook Live, as I said. It's on Facebook first. It goes onto my business page on Facebook, which is Barry Selby, the author. I then put it onto my YouTube channel, which also Barry Selby is the channel. And Messages from the Masculine is the playlist. Actually, Barry Selby is the user on YouTube. And Messages from the Masculine is the playlist, which is also the name of my podcast. So on iTunes, you go to the podcast, you search for Messages from the Masculine. You find my podcast, you can subscribe and download them there and listen to them as well. Um, with that, I thank you for watching. I will see you again tomorrow, as always, with some new content. Hope this has been of inspiration to you. If you have any questions, comments, or if, in fact, if you've got a memory of this in your own life, let me know in the comments below. I'd like to hear from you. And uh, with that, I wish you a wonderful evening. Take care of yourself, love yourself, and be clear that if something like that happens, oh, this is the other piece. I forgot this. P.S. If, as I said before, if you're around someone who is basically doted on by the parent and you can't be with them and it's here to walk away, this is the thing. It's not your fault. So be willing to forgive yourself, let yourself off the hook. It isn't up to you. It's up to them. So that is the piece I didn't put in, so now I've got that as a PS. So thank you for watching again. I'll see you again tomorrow. Take care of yourselves. Have a good evening. Bye. <laughs>